Pokemon. I'm sure we've all had experiences with Pokemon at some point, and for me, that was in 5th grade. My first real encounter with the game was during recess one day. Basically, the main tag people, aka the people who would play tag the most back then, have been playing with Pokemon cards for recess every day for quite a while. And this got several other players sad because they weren't playing with us anymore. So, what was the logical thing to do? Why, tell the teacher, of course! They're not playing with us anymore because they play a new game and I'm sad. This just kind of shows you how dumb 5th grade logic can be. This led to some big argument and lo and behold, Pokemon cards were banned until the start of the next year. This in turn actually led to Pokemon cards becoming much more popular. Soon, a black market quickly arose of trading these. Hey dude, whoa whoa whoa, don't be so loud, a teacher might hear us. Oh, sorry. Uh, you got that Dragonite? Yeah, you got that Charizard? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, if the teacher asks, you don't know me. See what recess. About a month later, I finally decided to download Pokemon Go. I will admit I was a little late, considering the hype for the game was mostly in the summer and I had gotten it in September. But still, I quickly grew to love Pokemon Go. Although, when I first got it, I didn't know when a Pokemon spawned that I could just click on it. I thought you actually had to go to the exact location to spawn on the map. So the first few days of me playing it were, Oh, uh, Dad, I gotta go outside real quick. A Pokemon just spawned outside the house. Oh, a new one just spawned. Oh, would you look at that? Another I grew obsessed with the game really fast. Like, there were times where I made my parents drive me downtown just because that's where all the good Pokemon were. Or the one time where we were leaving a park, about to head on to the main road, and then... <gasps> Dad! Dan a Dragonite! Oh my gosh, there's a Dragonite! Turn around, turn around, turn around! For those of you wondering, I did get it, so it was worth it, Dad! But anyways, that was around the time when I started thinking about all things Pokemon, which then led to... In around December in 5th grade, after playing Pokemon Go for over 3 months at this point, I figured it was finally time to join in on collecting some Pokemon cards. And so I got my first cards from CVS. And from then on, I started collecting Pokemon cards. However, as I stated earlier, this was in December at this point, and Pokemon cards were banned until after Christmas break. Which meant that I had to join in the whole secret underground trading business. Well, okay, truth be told, I've been exaggerating the whole underground part. Despite them being banned, some of us just left them out above our hooks. And during indoor recess, everyone would all gather in a circle out in the open, but also to like the side of the door, so we'd hopefully have enough time to hide our cards when the teacher would come in. That reminds me of the time one of my teachers from fourth grade came to watch us during indoor recess. At the time, since my collection was still relatively small, I put my cards in a pack in my pocket. However, you could clearly see that there were cards there due to how they were sticking out. And so then she goes, you have Pokemon cards, don't you? I then completely froze. I literally didn't say a word. I just kind of kept looking off into the distance like, oh shoot, she caught me. And then she just turned around and kept watching everybody else. Like, she just totally ignored the fact that I was breaking the rules. She probably just didn't feel like bothering that day. Anyways, one day I was with the circle and someone offered a trade for one of my cards. I denied it and someone else says, well, you wouldn't have wanted it anyway because a lot of Brady's cards are fake. What? Yeah, you see this left yellow part of this card is slightly larger than the right yellow part of this card, which means it's fake. And I believed it! Even when my dad explained to me, who has boxes of baseball cards that he used to collect, that it's just that they misprinted it a little bit because, you know, they probably just print them all off in a factory. But I still didn't believe him, and thus I ended up throwing away about half my collection at the time. After the ban on cards was lifted in January, almost every single person I knew in that class started collecting cards. If you remember from my second My Experience of Minecraft video, you would know this is around the time Minecraft died at my school. And Pokemon cards is what became its replacement. People brought their cards, books. Which I actually found one of the books I got for Christmas in fifth grade. Uh, hashtag lit, hashtag boy, no! And more. And actually, while I was preparing to make this video, I actually found an old video I made when I wanted to become a Pokemon card YouTuber. And all I can say is, thank God I didn't. You gotta energy. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. In around January, I got my first secret rare card. I also went to the mall once around this time and went to this card shop they had in the mall and I bought a pre-release card from when the game came out, but it only costed $5. Remember this for later. Anyways, around this time, Pokemon Sun and Moon was released, including GX cards, as well as, you know, a whole new Pokemon game, but people didn't actually care about the game itself. This was really the peak of Pokemon in the grade. Everyone was really excited about the new GX cards. 
And as soon as they came out, I was like, Dad, 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 we need to go to Target and buy one next. Truth be told, we probably overhyped it a bit. I mean, really, they weren't that different from normal EX cards. They were basically the same, except the artwork took up the full card. But anyways, around this time, I had traded the pre-release card for something. I think it was either a GX or some EX. But I immediately regretted it and tried everything to get it back. But the person I gave it to, Kenny, insisted on the fact that it was really valuable and that I just had made a dumb trade. Despite him not knowing, it only costed me like five bucks. And so, one day, during indoor recess, Kenny kept offering me a bunch of cards for that super rare card I was talking about earlier, but I kept saying, no, I'm not giving up this card. Then I noticed the dark Yerdos, and I said, actually, I'll give it to you if you give me that back. Okay. Let me tell you how stupid that was. Because looking at shopping, the card I gave him goes anywhere from $20 to $170. And so with that, I basically just gave away between $15 to $165. I thought it was a good trade. But whatever, after that, things still went back to normal. About a month later, however, something drastically changed. About a month later, people started to get tired of Pokemon cards, and Pokemon as a whole. You see, no one ever actually played the card game as well, the card game. I only ever played it once, and we didn't even pay attention to the rules. And after a while, just trading and doing nothing just got boring. People began trading less because they already had basically every card they would want. And... I don't know. There's no big twist in this like the Minecraft video where it slowly dies and then makes a staggering comeback. Pokemon just died quickly and is still dead to this day. There's been no intention in bringing it back because no one really cares to bring it back. What are they up to now anyway? Ugh, okay, we're not missing much. But in all seriousness, Pokemon cards were actually really fun. It's fun to look back at how stupid I was with it. So yeah, thanks for watching.